What does it mean to be trauma-informed? When someone's been through trauma, they collect something called ACEs, adverse childhood experiences. What are they and how do they fit into the whole picture? Adverse childhood experiences are traumatic events that can have a negative and long-lasting effect on health and well-being. There are generally three major areas, household challenges, abuse, and neglect. Household challenges include domestic violence, substance abuse, mental illness, parental separation or divorce, or maybe a parent who's been incarcerated. Abuse can be emotional, physical, or sexual, and it can take place within a household or outside of the household within the community. Neglect, emotional and physical. Basically, any trauma that leaves person physically scarred and unable to move on in life. One out of eight people have more than four ACEs and 67% of the population has at least one ACE. When you have one ACE, you might start to have disrupted neurological development. When you start to have two or three ACEs, not only might you have neurological development or disruption in it, but you also have social, emotional, and cognitive impairment. When you start increasing it to four ACEs or more, now you start to adapt health risk behaviors. People who have four or more ACEs have three times the level of lung disease in adult smoking, 11 times the level of drug abuse, 14 times the number of suicide attempt, four times as likely to have begun having intercourse by the age of 15, 4.5% more likely to develop depression, and two times more likely to develop liver disease. As your ACEs increase, the disease will begin to show up in adulthood. It could lead to disability, social problems, and even an early death. People with six ACEs or more can die 20 years earlier than those who do not have any. Adverse childhood experiences are the single greatest public health threat to our nation today. There is a difference between regular stress and toxic stress. So not only can it be childhood ACEs, but anyone who's starting to experience toxic stress can also start to develop ACEs. Toxic stress is chronic, meaning it lasts months, years, it is prolonged, and during toxic stress, there is no relief, there is no support. I've also included a link to a documentary where if you'd like to learn more about ACEs and toxic stress and resilience, and you have more time, you can go check that out. So I mentioned resilience. What is resilience? Well, resilience is the ability to start collecting more positive coping strategies than you have negative ones going on in your life. The good thing is that resilience will be aces every time. Think about it. When have you gone through something dramatic, traumatic, difficult, and yet still be able to make it out on the other side. Think about what did you do to get through? Well, here are some things that researchers say that we can do to help get ourselves through and develop resilience. One, have the ability of at least one stable, supportive relationship. Sometimes a lot of people will get into unstable relationships and now you have two people who are unstable. So you need to have at least one person who can help your accountability par partner and help keep you stable. B. Develop a sense of mastery over life circumstances. So many times people will focus on what they can't control that they don't focus on what they can. C. Strong self-regulation skills. Start to develop an awareness of when you're starting to unregulate. What does that feel like? I've downloaded a mood tracker and those are some 
ways that you might be able to start to develop some self-awareness skills of when you're deregulated and then start collecting a list of skills and things that you can do to help you get back into self-regulation. Also, a lot of people find a lot of comfort and support through faith or culture and traditional values. What we have to remember is it's not what is wrong with you, but what happened to you. It's not what you did, it's what caused you to do what you did. Trauma-Informed Part 2 ACEs is not just about kids or other people, it's also about you and who you work with. As the research states, the availability of at least one stable, caring, supportive relationship is one of the best ways to build resilience. But before you can be that for others as a parent, a coach, a community leader, maybe just a friend, you must be able to do that for yourself first. So what is self-care and how are you able to do it? (laughs) At a bare minimum, don't ever get to a place where you have to halt, where you're hungry, angry, lonely, or tired. Make sure that you're well fed, Make sure if you are getting angry, you take a time out for yourself. If you're lonely, phone a friend, and if you're tired, get some sleep. But there are other ways to practice self-care. Take a time out, listen to a one to five minute meditation, listen to some music, focus on a hobby, exercise, play a game, journal about emotions or experiences, phone a friend, call a counselor, practice mindfulness, Try seeing what is good in your now moment. Compassion fatigue versus burnout. If we take care of others before we take care of ourselves, we can begin to experience what we call compassion fatigue. We all want to have compassion for others, but when we are around others who are an emotional strain on us, well, It can build up our own toxicity over time by dealing with someone who is constantly in crisis. It can also build up because you worry about others while you're in your own break, home, or personal space. This can get us to get caught up and entangled in their trauma and drama, and this could lead to burnout. Burnout is the cumulative process marked by an emotional exhaustion and withdrawal. If you're around someone constantly who makes you exhausted, you may begin to withdraw from that person. So how can we prevent fatigue and burnout? Collaboration. The first thing you need to think about is yourself. What do I need in the moment and daily in order to be able to balance myself so that I can be in my best position to help others? Next, you need to think about the people who are closest to you. What do we need to do to get along in order to create a positive relationship between us? Ask each other and be open and honest. How do you like to be treated and how do I like to be treated? Me, you, and everyone else. How can we all show up for each other and make responsible decisions together? Hold each other accountable, yet in a compassionate way. Education. What things can you learn and gather so that you can collect and develop for yourself and others self-awareness and develop strategies for self-care? Next, mindfulness. So, is your mind full or are you being mindful? Mindfulness is like watching a car go by without chasing after it or stepping out in front of it. See thoughts as cars driving by, not as a web to get caught up in. Other trauma-informed strategies. Effective statements. Effective statements are respectful in tone and encourage others to express their feelings. They often have I statements that express a feeling. I felt disrespected when, I felt uncared about when. They provide a precise description of the person's behavior and the specific impact that behavior had on others around them. It does not protect the person 
from the consequences of their behavior.